Well, friends, unless you have been living under an oversized rainbow bow, you have probably heard of Jojo Siwa. <laughs> Jojo Siwa, the reality star slash YouTuber slash singer slash dancer. What can't you do? Is there anything? What can't yeah. I do? Is there something you're just not good? There's gotta be something. Ah! Uh who is attempting an, uh, how do you put it? An ill-fated rebrand as well, slash, or like the guy from Kiss. I have always known who she was. I would see her pop up on my feed from time to time. I knew her as like the side pony kid who screamed on the internet. <laughs> But now I know her as the girl with Gene Simmons makeup who screams on the internet. Why? <laughs> Literally, what did I say? And I cannot escape this young woman. I did not want to make a video about this originally. Oh my gosh, I have absolutely zero goose egg interest in JoJo Siwa, but I cannot escape her. Every single time I pull up YouTube, She's there staring at me with her little starry black star eyes. You know what I mean? Uh, and if you are totally unaware of what's happening and you don't know why I could possibly be talking about this, just stay tuned because you're about to see why. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you see why I did there? So let's talk about Jojo Siwa and her very strange, very bizarre, very bad rebrand. But first we have a word from today's wonderful sponsor. Hey friends, do you like to take care of yourself? If so, then you are going to absolutely love today's sponsor, Care Of. It's a very exciting sponsor for me. So Care Of offers a curated set of products, vitamins, supplements, what have you, that are personalized to you and your needs so that you can take better care of yourself. Do you get it? The products they offer are designed to work with research-backed ingredients at optimal doses. So you go on their website, you take their quiz. I thought it was gonna be like four or five questions. It's actually a very extensive quiz, which I really liked because it, it just makes it that much more personal. And then Care Of gives you doctor-backed recommendations for what supplements you might need. What might help you take care of you? Sorry, I just think the name is really clever. So one of the things that I complained about in my quiz was that I cannot stinking sleep. I just had a doctor appointment today about it. Lo and behold, they recommended this sleep blend for me. But do you wanna see the most adorable part? You get these little daily vitamin packs. And it has your name on it. It's so personal. So I was recommended to take chromium apple, apple extract, which helps support metabolic health because I'm always trying to lose weight. Rhodiola. <laughs> For stress slash focus. I didn't know even, I didn't, I never, I never, I, what, what, what is that? I didn't know that was a thing. Probiot, wait, they're probiotics. I have to talk to you about their probiotics. I worked with them like a couple years ago or like a year ago or something. They have these adorable little probiotic packets. I think it's called Pocket Protector. You can take their probiotics like, like a pixie stick. It's like this delicious, sweet powder that you just dump in your mouth. You don't even need water. Incredible. Thank you. So friends, if you were interested in trying out care of and taking better care of, yourself. You can visit takecareof.com and when you're checking out use code Jamie French. Be sure to spell my name correctly and you will get 50% off of subscription items in your order. You can also click the link that will be in my description box down below. So again friends that is takecareof.com. When you're checking out use code Jamie French and you will get 50% off subscription items within your order. Yay this is so exciting. We're all going to take better care of ourselves. So thank you so much to Care Of for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And now back to the show. Hey guys, we're back. A little bit of a backstory here. Jojo Siwa, for those of you who don't know, actually got her start on a show called Dance Moms. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I'm here right now. I am super excited. Or was her start actually on the Dance Mom spinoff? There was a show called like Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. I don't actually know. But anyway, she was kind of like the standout kid on that show. Jojo is hungry. She wants it. Uh, but for those of you who are not stooping to the fringes of competition reality TV, Dance Moms was like <laughs> this dance company of all kids owned by this crazy toxic woman <laughs> named Abby Lee Miller, who was very well known for motivating her girls with a gentle and nurturing hand. Really, Kendall? Kendall? 
You know what? You're done. The people that were in here dancing are a thousand times better than you. I really like this clip I found where Abby is like awarding JoJo with her spot at the dance company. You had some timing issues. Sometimes a little too loud. You take opportunities from people who have been here longer. Lip sync when you're on stage. Obviously you're crazy in public. You're lucky to even be a guest here at the ALDC. So, I'm gonna give you this jacket. This is sacred. And this is for the rest of this season. This is not for all eternity. Gotta love a good job. I can take it away from you at any moment moment. Yes, friends, instead of attracting bees with honey or vinegar, Abby Lee Miller attracted bees with the dead, rotting carcasses of their friend bees. To the kids. a little snake! How dare oh, you call oh, my daughter a sneak? Oh, wow. Snake! Oh, wow. She's not snake. a sneak! Snake. Snake. You're a sneak! No. A sne um, unsurprisingly, side note, Abby Lee... <laughs> I don't know why this is funny. Abby Lee spent a year in prison for fraud. So there's that. JoJo was also a Nickelodeon star. Nickelodeon just saw stardom in the, you know, goody two-shoes, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, screaming Mimi Siwa. And they plucked her into their company. So she went from one nurturing environment straight to an organization known for its sensitivity to the welfare of children. These are three predators who worked at Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon, they're following so I guess when these are the two environments that not only like taught you how Hollywood worked, but also happened at like a foundational developmental age, uh, it's not incredibly surprising to me that she was actually accused of some terrible behavior herself. So she was accused, I think it was in February of this year, of sort of creating a toxic work environment on her own reality show, Siwa's Dance Pop Revolution. <laughs> I should not be laughing, but I'm gonna be throughout this whole video. So Siwa's Dance Pop Revolution was like, I think it was kind of like P. Diddy's Making the Band. You remember Making the Band? Starring P. Diddy. You know something? Go, go, go. I want me a piece of cheesecake. And y'all can walk from here. Yeah. My cheesecake is in the least bit soft, a brittle, or not on point, you will go back. Yo fam, Puffy just told us to go to the store in Brooklyn and bring him back a cheesecake and walk. So there was a former cast member from Siwa's Dance Pop Revolution named Leia Sanderson. And she wrote like a tell-all Rolling Stone article where she accused Jojo of like berating the cast on the regular, shouting obscenities like you're sucking. Bring it up. The energy is low. You look sloppy. This isn't good enough. You know, that kind of thing. Smile. Grow a pair. Are you dancers? Focus. You're nothing. Got it? No talking. Push-ups. What is the problem? Honestly, it's not totally unlike the things I heard from like cheerleading coaches and gym class teachers and stuff in school, but <clears throat> nowadays I could see where it would be a big problem. Honestly, it just sounds like she was making reality TV, like probably performing a little bit because it was a TV show and essentially acting just like Abby Lee Miller. She was doing what she was taught, you know? So Lay Sanderson, that cast member, stay with me. She also claims that she was forced to work under like intense physical duress or stress. Apparently Jojo Siwa's mom, Jessalyn Siwa, encouraged her to attend a video shoot just weeks after she had spinal cord surgery for her condition called spina bifida. And Leia says that she was actually bleeding through her belly button. Oh dear God. Poor girl. She was bleeding through her belly button after her procedure and was still expected to attend rehearsals. Not only attend rehearsals, but she was encouraged to make sure she didn't get any blood on her costume. Yikes. That allegation is definitely a little worse than just the ones where she was yelling at the cast members. Which brings us to the current spot on the Jojo Siwa timeline, which is her naughty bad girl era, her yeah. rebrand, and the release of her new song, Karma's a B Word. <laughs> We don't cuss on this channel. No one has made this dramatic of a change yet. No one has made, in my generation, this extreme of a switch. And I am the first in the generation. Nobody in her generation has done a 180 from child star to baddie. Okay, so what about every single child star who's ever had a second act? <laughs> this is what kills me is she lists the people herself who have done it. I'm so excited. I mean, we've seen artists do this from Britney and Slay for you. Miley can't be tamed. Like, yes. how is this era going to feel for you to just finally let it go and be who yes. you authentically are? And then says that she's the first person to ever do it. There are people in my generation who have gone from child star to adult star in music world but not this 180 and even if you go off her argument where she's like well i'm doing it it's the most extreme nobody's ever done it this so extreme it's like miley cyrus was literally hannah montana and then i came in like a wrecking ball. Out 
outrageous too. Like how gigantic does your ego have to be, you know? When I first signed with Columbia, I said, I wanted to start a new genre of music. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, it's called gay pop. And they were like, what's that? And I was like, it's like K-pop, right? But it's yeah. gay pop. Do you hear that? That's the sound of the entire gay internet sharpening their bedazzled pitchforks. She started gay pop. Not Freddie Mercury, not Elton John. <laughs> Jojo Siwa. Throw me in the trash now. Oh man, I know. I'm not the first one to point this out, okay? Okay, fine, okay, fine. Maybe I'm the literal last person to point this out, as usual. But if you're gonna do your big adult rebrand, don't start it off by saying that you invented gay pop. I wanted to start a new genre of music. Like, imagine if a new basketball player showed up <laughs> in the NBA and was like, I'm so excited to invent dunking <laughs> while, while being mean to his teammates and being like, you're sucking. Stop it. Get some help. The other part I like about this interview is when she's like, am I be aging myself? Newer, not aging myself. It was newer when I was eight, right? Now I'm 20. Yeah, she's 20 years old, which means she has been alive for approximately eight seconds, meaning you don't get to say that you're aging yourself. So in this interview on the Call Her Daddy podcast, which by the way, I almost named my channel, Alex Cooper beat me to the punch. Jojo talked about some other very endearing topics. Somebody made a video hating, making fun of the dance. I I duetted them, mm -hmm. poking at the dance, and they posted another video of them reacting to my duet. And I was like, oh, a day ago you were making fun of it. Now you are screaming around your room, freaking out, crying, because I duetted it. And she also wore this hat. I'm 19, like it really isn't that dramatic. It's really not that dramatic. I'm all for statement pieces, okay? When it comes to creative head, where you're always just like one small step away from the hat with clapping hands where you pull the string. <laughs> This, this, that's all I can see with this hat. <laughs> um, now to her credit, it does look like, I'm just seeing this right now, so I feel silly, but she did appear to walk back her first comments when she saw those bedazzled pitchforks. I'm not the creator, but I'm, I'm not the president, but I might be like the CEO or the like CMO. Okay. I could be the CMO, the chief marketing officer. I like Obviously, that. Yeah, my marketing tactics, whether people like it or not. I could be the CEO, the chief marketing officer. Apology 101, friends, when you're trying to elicit sympathy and apologize for your crummy comments. Come up with a metaphor describing yourself as the chief marketing officer. Because chief marketing officers are universally adored by creatives and fans of art. Like I said, I will never ever claim to be a singer. Yeah. But I will claim to be an artist. Okay. I am giving the world art. And as the chief marketing officer of my own channel, <laughs> I gotta take a break. When we come back, we get to watch the music video, maybe if I can get away with it without getting a copyright claim. Hey guys, we're back. This is in my face. How do I just sit over here? Then I just feel like it's looking at me, you know? So apparently recently there was some big internet drama about Jojo Siwa's new song, Karma's a B Word. Big internet drama, you know, as opposed to uh, little internet drama. Apparently this song was like stolen or something. People were saying and alleging that this song was stolen. So Karma by Jojo Siwa is actually a scrapped Miley Cyrus song. And I'm not joking. Because as you know, when a pop song this original descends from the creative heavens, that you hooked up with her, the true origin of its genius will always be hotly debated. Anyway, so some fans thought it was stolen from maybe a scrapped Miley song, but then other internet sleuths tracked down this clip of this singer songwriter, let's be honest, more of a songwriter, Brit Smith. Okay, uh, totally wrong, by the way, when I joked about her not being a good singer. She's a good singer. Uh, yeah, this is the song. And so everybody was saying, Jojo stole it, Jojo stole it. The internet was shocked to find out that Jojo Siwa may have stolen both of her songs that she's releasing, so here's the tea. When I tell you, the internet was beside themselves after hearing Jojo Siwa talk about karma for weeks as if she originally created it like Beethoven himself, that a video of another singer singing it word for word with a music video went viral. Her name is Brit Smith. Until still, other. These are the. This is the third other. Other internet sleuths did some absolutely crazy sleuthing, like the the type of sleuthing that I am just not humanly capable of doing. Looked up the producers on both songs, I guess this song and the Miley song, realized that they were the same people. So back in 2011, which is when Miley was in her can't be tamed era, a popular update account for her said that they heard from a very reliable source that Miley had a song called Karma's Abuse. 
change. And then Miley seemed to confirm this in 2012 when she was in a Twitter conversation with the producers of Can't Be Tamed, Rock Mafia, and they even responded to her tweet with hashtag karma's a bitch. If you look at the writing credits for Karma by Jojo Siwa, you'll see that Jojo isn't listed. She took no part in writing the song. But who is listed? Rock Mafia as the producers and writers, and Antonia Armato as a writer. And Antonia wrote for a bunch of Disney artists back in the day, including Miley. You factor that in with the fact that Jojo never claims to have written the song. The song does sound like a 2010 record. It does, and that's, that was the goal. But there was a point in time where it sounded a little too 2010. Oh, it sounded like a 2010 song? That's shocking, because it was only written in 2011. <laughs> okay, now I personally don't think that this is that weird. Like, I think this is kind of how the music industry works. Like, I remember being at a Katy Perry concert, okay, and Casey Musgraves opened for her, and Casey Musgraves told this story about how she wrote this song called Mama's Broken Heart. You know, I cut my bangs with some rusty kitchen scissors. I scream his name till the neighbors called the cops. Uh, so she wrote that. Miranda Lambert wanted the song. Casey wasn't sure if she wanted to give it to her. It was this whole debacle. And then Casey was like, all right, you can have it. That's one story in a sea of a million. This is how the music industry works. And in fact, it just so happens that I am in the process currently of trying to buy the rights to a song by an artist that I want to... Um, release myself because it just spoke to me. She wasn't doing anything with it. The song is incredible. I'm getting off on a tangent here. So this is not weird at all to me. I did notice the use of her, Jojo kept saying the word we in this video, the how it went down video, we instead of I. We reined it in, we found the mix of 2024 and 2010. To finally conclude that like 97% of pop songs you hear on the radio, the rich pop singer paid a songwriter money for it. I'm glad it took three teams of internet sleuths, sleuths to come to that conclusion. It is weird that the same song was sold twice, but I guess we'll save that conversation for like a deep dive into uh, maybe Brit Smith's side hustle. Anyway, let's uh, let's look let's make fun of Karma's a female dog. My grandpa watches my channel. All right, get to the get to the beach. Get to the beach. This would be a very long push in, like if it were a movie. <laughs> I did some bad things. I swear I did it all, but not in him and nothing. It was Sorry, it's just so cr <laughs> it's just so cringe because I can't get over the fact that this was her like five seconds ago. A child. Like when a tree falls in the forest, no one hears it. <gasps> deep. Wow, that's deep. <sighs> Wait, she messed up that ex she totally me that's that's not the right expression, right? If a tree falls and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? Isn't that the phrase? No one hears it. If it just falls, it makes a sound to like a squirrel. <laughs> you forgot about squirrels, Jojo. Speaking of nature, this iceberg here, this is just the perfect metaphor. It's like Jojo's good girl image and general likability um, is melting away, you know? She is a good <laughs> Okay, that was pretty goofy. <laughs> I feel like this is actually like just a whole summation of the JoJo experience as of late. Ah! This production, okay, hot production tip for those of you who are interested in shooting your own music video. Um, if you're over budget on your, you know, yacht beach music video shoot, uh, just play back the footage backwards, like the same clip that you just played and just make it seem like a like a like an avant-garde creative choice see watch i can do the same thing yeah always isn't it cool and now that we've commented on the video let's see what she has to say about it originally i was scared of the lyrics i didn't want to say bitch i didn't want to say i was a bad girl because i wasn't a bad girl oh i see okay so it was hard for you to write a song about being something that you are completely not so weird advice here, but <laughs> don't do that. If you're not a bad, if you're not a bad girl, just don't don't say you are. You know, write a song about being a big Kiss fan, <laughs> or a little bit of a narcissist. You know what I'm saying? We did a version where it was you were a bad girl, you did some bad things, and then we did she was a bad girl, she did some bad things. And I was like, well, why are we making it specific to girls? They were a bad. Okay, that doesn't work. Less than a minute into this, like the making of video, and she has a full 20 second spiel on like first 
person versus third person selection. That's when you know the song. That's when you know the song is lit. Was how hard she debated over first person versus third person. We actually recorded Karma six different times. I had six sessions on Karma a couple times with different vocal producers. And that was really just because. That was really just because I fired so many people because I'm an absolute unhinged tyrant to work for. <laughs> she is like a cute little dancer though. Like I do like her choreography, especially like this move. I think I herniated a disc. Again. <laughs> you know what, you guys, enough is enough, okay? I, I'm, I'm hating on JoJo, but at least she is putting herself out there. I've been contemplating my own rebrand lately, and you know, I've been a little stuck. Will you guys like listen to my song, my rebrand song, and tell me if you think it's baller or not? But seriously, kids. Can somebody help? Well, friends, the moral of this story today is Jojo Siwa is maybe not the best role model for your kids. Unless she, uh, you know, I, she just thinks far too highly of herself. And I know that we live in a world right now where everyone's like self-love, self-care, self this, self, 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 self. But sometimes too much love for oneself could be maybe not the best thing. So that is all for me today, friends. Can, can my video be the last video about Jojo? Can we stop talking about her now? Thank you. Uh, thanks for watching. Follow me on my other social accounts if you want to see really weird, terrible, garbage content. And I will see why you later. <laughs>